In the last videos of our Flexbox section, we were talking about the properties that affect the container. Now we will look at the properties that affect the flex items. In this section of the course, we'll be talking about how we can control ratios of flex items along the main axes. We'll be looking at flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. These properties are applied to the flex items and they enable us to control the size and flexibility of the items along the main axes. Fully understanding how these properties work in regards to growing and shrinking items is the real key to mastering Flexbox. These three properties control the following aspects of a flex item's flexibility. Flex Grow controls how much of the positive free space the item actually gets. Flex Shrink controls how much negative free space can be removed from the item. And Flex Basis controls what the size of the item is before the growing and shrinking happens. Generally, when we use these three properties, we express them using the Flex property shorthand. Let's take a look at an example so we can see how this works. Here I have a div with a class of container. It contains three items. I already have a display of Flex on the container, so my three items are going to sit side by side. And actually, let's adjust the width and make the width 150 pixels for each item. The width on the container is set to a fixed width of 600 pixels. As you can see, I have some available space. In regards to understanding the flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis properties, we need to consider the concept of available space. What are we doing when we change the value of the flex properties is that we change the way the available space is distributed amongst our items. This concept of available space is also important when it comes to aligning items, and we'll talk about that later. Here I have three 150 pixel wide items. They are within a 600 pixel width container. And as you can see, I have some leftover space. My leftover space is basically 150 pixels. By default, any extra available space is going to appear after the last item. Many times we don't want this extra space, but we want the items to grow and fill the space. So we need to have a method of distributing the leftover space between the items. And that's what the flex properties allow us to do. The flex basis property is what defines the size of the item in terms of the space that it leaves as available space. The initial value of this property is auto. So what happens is the browser looks to see if the items have a size. In our example, all of our items have a width of 150 pixels. So this is used as the flex basis. If the items don't have a size, then the content size is used as the flex basis. If I comment this out, you're going to see how my items shrink. They're only going to be as big as they need to be to contain the content. The flex grow property when set to a positive integer is going to flex items so that they can grow along the main axes from their flex basis. This is going to cause them to stretch and take up any available space on that axis or a portion of the available space if the other items are allowed to grow too. If I go ahead and declare a flex grow value of one on all of the items and we refresh, you can see that now the items are going to be larger than 150 pixels. What we're doing is we're saying, let these items take up any available space in the flex container. And since we're assigning them equal flex grow values, the value of one, they're going to share the available space between all of the items and they're going to stretch to fit in the container along the main axes. We can use the flex grow property to distribute space in proportions. If we give the first item a flex grow value of two and we refresh, you're going to see how item one now takes up slightly more space. What happens is any available space that is there, so we had 150 pixels, two parts of that available space is going to be given to the first item and then one part each is going to be assigned to the other two items. Where the flex grow property deals with adding space to the main axes, the flex shrink property controls how it is taken away. If we do not have enough space in the container to lay out our items 
and the flex shrink is set to a positive integer, then the item can become smaller than the flex basis. So if I go ahead and I make the width of my container 300 pixels, which is going to be smaller than can actually contain the items, you can see that they all shrink down and they equally distribute the amount of space within the container. If I assign a flex shrink to item two of two, you can see that it becomes smaller than the other items. We can assign different values to our items and cause certain items to shrink faster than the other items. An item with a higher value set for flex shrink is going to shrink faster than its siblings that have lower values. We didn't ever define a flex shrink on any of the other items, so by default they're inheriting the default flex shrink value. The default flex shrink value is 1, and so when I made flex shrink 2 for item 2, it becomes half as large as the other items. Now commonly, when you use these flex properties, we will combine them into shorthand. We rarely use flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis individually. Instead, they're often combined into the flex shorthand. The flex shorthand allows us to set the three values in this order, flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm going to go into my index page, and I have another area of code that I have commented out, so I'm going to uncomment that out. If we save and we refresh, you can see that in this example, item one has more content. As you can see, the width of this item is taking up slightly more space than our first example. The reason why is that it needs to expand to accommodate the content that is within it. The web page is trying to render the flex grow and flex shrink properties the best it can, but the content, of course, is forcing this particular item to be wider because we have long words like placeholder, which are actually wider than the width that the flex container is allowing these to be. If we increase the overall width of our container to 600 pixels, you'll see that in both examples, the flex items are going to be equally spaced. And that is because we don't have to calculate this extra amount of space. There is enough room for them to have their initial width, and then they are growing to split the rest of the space on the page equally. Oftentimes when we're working with flex, we're not going to be using fixed width on the containers. I'm going to target container two, and I'm just going to set the width to 80%. If we save our page now, you can see as I resize my page, how the flex items will grow and shrink depending on the width of the page. We're going to make a more specific selector that's going to target container two and all of our items. What we'll do now is we're going to use the flex value and we're going to set the grow to one, the shrink to one, and the flex basis to auto. If we refresh our page, you can see how the items are going to adjust. And if I resize my page, the items are always going to stay the same equal width, no matter how wide or narrow my page gets. What we're specifying here is that the flex grow is set to one, the flex shrink is set to one, and the flex basis is set to auto. It's inheriting the width from the initial width property that we defined. And of course, because we're using flex grow, these items are allowed to grow. Now it is worth pointing out that the default value of flex, if you don't declare it, is actually zero for grow, one for shrink, and auto for flex basis. And this will be more reminiscent of what our page is going to look like before we added any sort of flex. You can see that these items are now simply 150 pixels wide. If the container was not wide enough to accommodate them, they would be allowed to shrink. When we set the flex basis to auto, the items are going to be set to any size that has been specified, or they will generate the size from their content. I'm going to go back into my HTML and I have one other block of code. I'm going to uncomment this out. This is the same thing, except item one just contains item one. We'll go back to our CSS and I'm going to make a rule for .c3.item. And what we'll do here is we're going to set our flex value to auto. 
Flex Auto is the shorthand of setting the Flex Grow to 1, the Flex Shrink to 1, and the Flex Basis to Auto. And before we check this in the browser, let's go ahead and assign a width to Container 3 to also be 80%. If we save now and we refresh, you can see that my items are going to take up whatever available space they can. And we looked at this before. If we do something like target one of the unique items, I'm going to target item number two in container three. And we're going to redefine flex. We're going to set the flex grow property to three, the flex shrink property to one, and we'll leave the flex basis at auto. Now when I refresh, you can see that item two is going to take up considerably more space than the other two items. As I resize my page, that item is going to grow at a proportionate rate to the other items. It will always be three times as large as the other items, as long as the page is wide enough to accommodate that. I encourage you to experiment and play around with the flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis properties. They can be a little confusing, but they are very important since they do allow us to be able to redistribute the items in conjunction to the available space.